Hey guys, welcome to the Kane Audio vlog series. Um, today I'm going to be looking at fillers, I guess. Um, I quite often get asked by people how 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 do you sort of get a track sounding fuller um, with a, a, a bigger sound, um, and I think actually a, a lot of people make the mistake of. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, you know, the, there's a lot of people I see, and a few people I engineer for. You, you, you see, they have like fifty, sixty, seventy channels of sound going on. And you think, geez, well, you know, what are all these sounds doing? And quite often, you'll see um, someone might have. In fact, most producers, I think, go through a phase where they learn about doubling things up and maybe having two of the same vocal panning one left and right and whatever and while that's a valid technique especially for vocals um i think a lot of people apply that to synths as well and it's almost unnecessary at times um it's not necessarily wrong but it's just not something i do um what i always think is if you've got three four five channels of of the same melody being played by different synths then you probably picked the wrong sound in the first place so i'm not sure you know that's again that's not always true but i'm not sure it's the best thing to do sometimes you know you might be better off just starting from scratch with that one sound and, and finding a more appropriate sound and sometimes it can be because you know you want some more high end in this synth so you add another one in to add the high end and then as you go through the track you want something slightly different so you add a bit more in and you end up with layers and layers of of the same thing just repeated um what i tend to do to avoid that is i tend to fill in sometimes with just a random little sound it could be a, an arp sort of melody playing subtly in the background uh in this example i've got here you can see on the screen I've written Moog Snare. Um, what I've done is I've grabbed the Sub 37, found a, a, a sound that kind of has this white noise, snarey kind of big hit. Um, and I've basically recorded that in as a pattern. Um, and what it does is it just kind of beefs up the track. But, it, but I wanted in this track specifically to add a bit more kind of chaos to the feel of the track. Um, so what I'll show you, I'll show you like a bit of the end of the breakdown and where it comes in just as it is and then we'll get into the detail now. Um, so this is the main thing. So yeah, you can hear there. It's a it's a pretty heavy hitting track. There's a there's a lot of big sounds in there, um, and in terms of the mix, I suppose it's kind of dry. It's kind of rigid, um, uh, or at least was very rigid as I was making it. I kind of felt like you know it's a bit too clean and a bit too friendly. Um, so yeah, so I recorded in this Moog synth. Um, which is basically just a kind of snare kind of noise I've automated it slightly over time um, what I like to do uh, one of the reasons I like using hardware over software is because to add that sort of human element to my music I like to um, you know record things in manually rather than just draw in a line so the only automation you can see on my screen here is just a uh, gain control coming down slightly but when I recorded the original line in I'd basically play it and it'd be slightly out of sync as well I've left the latency there as well so it's all pretty rough and ready um, but this is the actual snare line I've put in pretty simple I mean there's you know there's not much to it um, if I just add in a kick drum to that as well 
um, and then play it from over here. Let's have a listen. So yeah, I mean, it's um, you know it's not doing much when you when you're playing it over the whole track. Let's just get rid of the solos of those channels and play again from there. Um, but it's kind of doing a few things, so it's kind of filling the spaces in between the kick drums and the hi-hats and claps, whatever else is going on. There's that repeating, uh, you know, th th uh, top line synth. Um, there's quite a bit going on and this is just basically adding to the, the complexity of the sound, I suppose. Um, it's only subtle in the mix. It's minus whatever dB. It's it's not it's not high up in the mix, and it kind of needs to be kept low down in the mix and quite subtle. Um, I've put an instance of LFO tool, basically doing equivalent to a side chain, so it doesn't interfere too much with the kick drums. Um, I've stuck in a rotary. Uh, this is in Bitwig, uh, which is my favourite door at the moment. Uh, incredible bit of software. Um, and one of the built-in effects is this rotary which allows it to sort of freely pan left and right um, so I've set the rate at 0 0.3 Hertz so it's a pretty slow rotary I, do, I don't know how well the stereo balance is going to come up in this recording um, I'm still kind of learning the whole video bit um, but the amount of modulation again is pretty subtle so as those snares play um, if you can't hear it in this video, you can at least see it down here in the um, the output meters. So it's almost on a one bar, 0 0.3 hertz. It's not gonna be perfectly one bar, but it's kind of one bar to the left, one bar to the right and it's kind of swinging. So it just adds that, again, that sort of human element, a bit of chaos in the background. Um, yeah, and I just kind of wanted to get that across just as something that adds a bit of depth to a track, something that, you know, for someone who, who when you find a, a track you like, or when I find a track I like, there's quite often a few different sounds going on in the background that on the fourth, fifth, sixth time of listening to it, I might sort of spot a new sound and go, oh, hang on, I didn't even realize that was there. And I think this is one of those sounds. Um, I do it a lot with arpeggiation sort of sounds um, um, quite often in tracks. And I'll, I'll make another video on that actually because quite often I'll have an arpeggiator that's that's actually out of sync. It won't even be on a 4-4 time. It could be on a totally different time signature. Um, and again, it just kind of adds that additional layer um, so where a lot of producers I see layering up and stacking synths on top of each other that's one way of achieving a, a, a bigger fuller sound um, but for me I kind of like it a bit more stripped back and just something in the track that is a bit more human a bit more natural a bit more wrong I suppose um, so yeah what I've done with this Moog is it's just basically a white noise snare drum type sound. Um, it's LFO'd, it's swinging back and forth out of time from left to right uh, very slightly. There's a small amount of reverb on it. Um, it's quite a syncopated rhythm. Um, and it's somewhat automated where I've automated by the sounds of it the decay and release times. Maybe a bit of filter on there as well. Um, it's kind of not in time and in fact when I recorded it in there's a bit of latency in there I've left it as it is um, chances are if I open it up um, you'll see that it's probably not perfectly um, uh, there we go look so as I zoom in you know you can see they're not they're not really on the grid you can see the latency there's a bit delayed by a few milli or microseconds um, 
Yeah, and I think that's something that's hopefully a good little tip for just adding a bit of dimension into your tracks and getting something a bit more free flowing in there. Um, and yeah, kind of a reminder of not everything has to fit to the grid, to the 4 4 standard. Um, yeah, as usual, uh, if you like the video, please like subscribe whatever it is you want to do uh, give us a comment and let us know what other videos you want to see if you've got any questions i will be monitoring the comments so troll until your heart's content see you later